Hey, so it was a nice day, so I decided to uh, cut the uh, the holes for the plexiglass control panel today. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple things. So um, I'm going to drill these holes out with an actual drill itself. Um, and I'm going to show you the reason why I'm using a drill bit and uh, not either of these guys. So the, the whole idea is, uh, you probably ask yourself, why doesn't he just drill the whole entire hole out? Um, well, that would uh, that would work on a normal piece of MDF, but if you're working with Plexi, most likely as soon as you hit the the bottom, uh, it'll it'll burst out and crack. Uh, this is even worse. Like uh, you, you drill a little hole and then you're, you're running along the edge. Um, both of these you don't want to use on Plexi, uh, so I use a different method. I use a plexiglass bit. Uh, the difference between a normal bit, a one half inch bit, and a plexiglass bit is the angle. So this is a little bit, you'll notice it's a little bit sharper angle than a regular one half inch bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill a hole in the middle of all these buttons and then I am going to actually cut the hole, the template size hole out of MDF. I'm gonna get a router and I'm gonna get a uh, uh, edge riding bit and I'm going to um, ride the edge of the MDF hole that I just drilled so that's going to give me a perfect plexi hole instead of uh, you know you spent a lot of money on this plexi you don't really want to crack it now after you've, you've cut out the entire thing so um, yeah you, you don't want to use these on plexi just as a heads up <laughs> because you just wasted all that money if you end up cracking uh, and you you know you may get a couple holes that are perfect uh, you may have no issues, but um, yeah, you definitely don't want to risk, you know, um, you know, one of the 20 chances that you have to crack your plexi. So this is what you're going to want to get. And then after you get one of these uh, and you drill your hole, you're going to get want to get a uh, one of the edge um, trim, a uh, flush trim edge bit and you're going to get a one you want to get a flush trim edge bit that is smaller than the size of your um your your bit for cutting for drilling the hole in the plexi so this is a half inch bit um i get a three inch uh flush trim bit and what i'll do is i'll fit that in the hole all the way down till i hit my template on my mdf and then i'll just follow the edge of the template with the with the router so you definitely think you're gonna need a router for this. Um, if that's you know, you can't just do it. I mean, like I said, you can you can attempt to. I don't know. This uh, there's, there's a possibility if you get a nice sharp hole saw, um, and maybe you get a, a a plexi bit on the end here with your drill, or you take it real slow, that you know you'll you'll be able to cut your holes okay. But uh, yeah, I like to I like to be safe about it because you know, like I said, I spent a lot of money on Plexi, and uh, I don't want to I don't want to waste it after all this work that I've done. So I'm gonna put this on pause right now and set this up, and I'm gonna drill out some of these holes. All right, um, I've got the Plexi bit on. So there's something else I want to show you um, that if I'm gonna be drilling holes in this, I don't want to be drilling holes into my uh, into my table. So I tend to extend the uh, a, a sheet of MDF out a little bit. So if I'm going to drill holes, this is going to go through the MDF and not through the table. Um, that's why I got a big rock on the back to hold this table from tipping while I drill. So let me uh, let me set this up here. All right. So um, I'm going to do this the same way I normally do it. Uh, I have my duster to get rid of the extra scrap, and I have WD-40. Now, um, what I do with the WD-40 is um, I'll spray a little bit in the hole after I get deep enough when it starts heating up. That way, you know, again, I don't want to crack the plexi, so uh, I don't know. I, I always like to use it just for the sake of keeping everything like lubricated as it's cutting. So, you know, let's say I start on this hole right here. I'm gonna. I'm not going to go nuts on it, but definitely. This is going to bind up and eventually you're going to hear what sounds like a grinding sound. Yeah. 
maybe it'll start getting a little hot. Just uh, dump a little bit of this inside the hole. And then continue cutting, it'll cool it off a bit. And you're constantly taking the stuff off your drill. Those plexi shavings and stuff. It'll get really hot. It'll start gumming up. And once you start seeing uh, MDF, you know you've hit the bottom of the hole. Now I'm seeing MDF. Now it's time to go on to the next one. So uh, I want to hit this. You don't want to run into the MDF too much because it'll start heating up your blade. See how it's smoking. So I have to just drop a little bit of this in the hole. Um, you know what? You don't even really need to uh, drill it right on top of the MDF, but it definitely gives it some. It makes it a little bit easier, and it stops it from cracking. The problem is, if there's something underneath it, you're less likely to crack uh, a hole because it's still going down instead of just um, cutting right through and then having a, you know, possibly of snapping at the end. You can hear that? That's why I do it over the MDF, because you can hear the grinding. they're big enough to fit the uh, three eighths. Definitely not something that uh, that's done quick. So I'm gonna finish off these holes and then I'll uh, I'll pause the video so I can do the rest of them. So that way the video is not too too long. Blades hot. <sighs> Once the blade heats up too much, it'll start gumming up stuff, so you don't want to. That's why I use WD 40 so I don't gum up anything. And once it starts gumming up, it's not sticking to your blade.
think we'll widen the holes a little bit because obviously I'm going to be putting that tool down there, the Dremel. Not the Dremel, sorry, the, uh, the powder. Take off the shavings because otherwise it won't. It'll uh, it'll gum up in there. That's why I'm always taking the shavings off. If, uh, if you don't take the shavings, it'll heat the shavings up, and the shavings will gum up inside the hole, and then you just get a big mess, and then it's just a pain in the ass to uh, to cut anything. It is not something that's a fast going thing, that's for sure. Probably noticed. And you definitely want to do it outside because it can get a little bit messy. That's going to be uh, the first part of the control panel holes drilled out, so I'm going to pause and uh, do these this side and then maybe uh, I'll unpause and I'll finish off the edges uh, and the, uh, the center. Alright, I get the other side done, so I decided to unpause it. A um, couple things while I was doing that. Um, so you don't want to go down too too fast either. Um, I don't think that's going to be an issue because this, this, these blades cut pretty well in plexiglass. They're made for plexiglass. So um, yeah, just for the most part. I mean, you, you, you just sink it in the beginning. Put a little pressure on it. Wait till your blade gums up, and then uh, some type of ED40 in there, and then continue on. to the other. It's pretty much impossible uh, to crack it at this method. I've, I've never cracked, I never came close to cracking uh, the plexiglass with this. Like I said, you know, as long as you don't heat anything up, there's no, uh, no reason it's going to crack. Uh, you'll know if you heat something up because you'll see smoking coming out of the hole and uh, your, your blade will start gumming. You'll feel the gum uh, pull on it when you're uh, using it. I'm smoking a little bit there. You can see it's starting to gum up down there. So I definitely want to give another good squirt. Take your time. Obviously, you don't want to go from... Don't do what I'm doing and going from one hole to another real quick. Because uh, your blade's still hot. Or 
should give it a second to rest and I will between uh, this last hole. battery anyway so Obviously, uh, I'm also going to want to do a hole in the center of the uh, track ball area because that's where I'm going to ride the, one of the routers. So um, after this, I'm going to finish off these last few holes off camera. Um, I will show you about the template. So for the template, uh, to make the, to, to, to flush trim the holes, uh, you're going to want to print out just like the sections of the template um, that will have the buttonholes and stuff like that. And then you're going to use the hole saw or Forsner bit I told you not to use on the Plexi on the MDF that you can use to make the template. So I've got this scrap piece of MDF, most likely I'm just going to use that. Um, I use the same one that uh, I have on this table here that I'm using as scrap. And uh, I will put the um, riding uh, uh, edge trim bit on my router and I will just ride the, uh, the holes that I have here. This is, a, this is a great bit to use. Um, I've never had a problem. These things are awesome for Plexi. You'll, you'll never crack a Plexi uh, with the with the plexiglass bit. It just even even if I was to run this all the way through, um, I have a feeling I wouldn't crack anything. But I'm not going to risk that on. $200 worth of plexiglass. <laughs> After this last one, I'll pause it so that way you don't have to sit there and watch me do the rest of these. And there's so much more I gotta do. I don't wanna make the video too long. Just watching me drill holes all day. <laughs> Alright, so here is what everything looks like after all the holes have been drilled. Um, those are all uh, half inch. 
diameter of holes, well, half inch holes. And uh, what I'm going to do next is I printed out a couple pages that I'm going to use for templates for all these. Um, you don't have to do much, much, but you know, obviously, if I'm going to make templates, I want to make sure stuff is going to line up correctly. So, you know, obviously, that's going to go there. Um, I can also use this again for for the side over here because those are the same distance from each other. Um, you know, get your top section here, your three pieces. Uh, this will go on your your four over there, or you can use it again for over here. And of course, your. Uh, Of course, your button and controller layout I have right here, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So you can use that there, or you know you can use it again here. So these are going to be used to make actual templates. These four pieces of paper, um, and I'm going to actually drill these out on MDF, um, and I'll show you what I'm going to do next after that. All right. So again, uh, print out some templates and uh, come through the uh, MDF. Oh, I get that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna spray these guys down to the MDF, and I'm gonna cut them out. So let's start off with this guy right here. The MDF absorbs a little bit more, so you definitely want to. Uh, Put a little extra on there. Um, the reason why you want to stick this and not just you know, cut into it or tape it down is because uh, it's gonna it's gonna come up as soon as you start drilling into it. So kind of good spot for all your templates. And then uh, just cut them out. least this guy right here. Put that in the edge here. So this is gonna be your template wood. You're gonna cut your holes in the MDF and then you're going to use the flush trim mount to uh, ride the holes uh, to make perfect holes in your um, plexiglass. So I, uh, for these, I like to use poison a bit. Um, just makes better, cleaner holes. So you just want to make sure everything's perfectly centered where it should be. Uh, and I'm, yeah, not gonna. So I seemingly bumped the table. Uh, not 
fucked up with my camera. Let's try this again. <laughs> so, again, you're gonna want to uh, make sure everything's nice and centered. Make sure you put it on tight. The nice thing about these 1 8 inch holes is you'll have a little bit of room when you put the button in to wiggle the button around to, to even it out. One more. All right, I just wanted to show a couple other things really quick. Um, when you're ready to cut out your trackball, um, most trackballs will come with a spacer. You know, just uh, I'd bring this to Home Depot and try to find yourself a hole saw roughly the same size. So this one is three and a half. Um, so the three and a half inch hole saw, and I'm going to use that to cut out the actual hole for the trackball. Everything else is done here, so it's just a matter of cutting this out. And this thing's a real pain sometimes because it's very slow going. But you want to make sure you get everything straight. It gets hot really easy.
stuff over the edge. Alright, and here's what it's going to look like after it's done. So, uh, you'll note I've uh, drilled out all the holes that I'm going to use as the template. Um, and I will use that to ride the router on with the, the trim bit. Alright, let me get that all set up and I'll start doing that. So here's how you're going to use your template, okay? Um, what you're going to do is you're going to tack it on to the area. Make sure you can see the nice pink lines all in there. Or whatever lines you have. And uh, you're going to flip it over and you're going to put the um, router in the hole and just ride around these holes like that with the, uh, the flush trim bit. That's how I make all my holes. So, um, sometimes you might need to adjust this. Uh, so it looks like this is a little bit over too much on some of the holes than it is in the others. But uh, yeah, for the most part, you know, you can use whatever you want as far as, uh, as far as whichever one you want to use for whatever hole. So you got something straighter than the other. Um, I guess I should have told you to make sure when you when you drill these holes in the MDF, make sure you go down straight and not like at an angle and stuff like that. Because a couple of them I went down an angle, but I could just redo that. Not a big deal, but um, yeah, that's that's how we're gonna do the uh, the trim. All right, so I'm gonna put this on pause again. So before I put this bit on my router, I'm gonna let everybody know this is a three eighths bit. Um, the deal is, this uh, I drilled a one half inch hole, so these will fit very nicely in the hole without any issues. Uh, so when I do go and I do route these, it's gonna ride with the with a little bearing. The uh, I'm gonna turn this over. It's gonna ride these little holes uh, to make a nice hole for the uh, for the buttons and joysticks and everything else and uh, trackball. So once I, I have to redo the. Uh, should say I should I'm gonna readjust this when I start doing the trackball and stuff like that but that's uh that's basically it um, I'll get this all set up and then we'll do a few of these all right so I uh I marked which holes I'm gonna do first so um I'm just gonna put the router make sure everything's nice and tight make sure this thing doesn't slip and uh everything's where it should be and then uh make sure the the router you can Make sure the router is loose in the hole so when you turn it on it's not flying everywhere or actually I like to start it up outside of the hole.
And that is how you get the holes out of the plexi. So do what you know is lined up. Some of the holes didn't line up, so I didn't do all the holes. But uh, these holes lined up. And that's uh, that's how you do it right there. So those are going to be the buttonholes. I got this, these two. I got to line these two up on the other side, and then the actual other piece. But take it slow, you know, and then uh, make sure everything's lined up. And uh, it'll come out good. I'll uh, do some more a little later. I got a couple things I got to do right now, but uh, I'll, I'll be back. Uh, here's what it looks like with the template off. So, yeah, showing a little bit of a little bit of the uh, the line everywhere. I mean, eighth. Nobody's going to notice an eighth of an inch. You can move the uh, the buttons that eighth of an inch if you need be up, down, left, or right. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good way to to get really thick plexi uh, because that's that's almost uh, coming up to uh, three fourths of an inch right there. Thick, a little bit more than three fourths of an inch of plexi right there. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, I'll do, uh, do these and I'll set this up so I can show you the uh, trackball. Hey, so uh, I was waiting for the sun to go down a little bit so it makes it a little bit cooler what I'm working on here. So, uh, yeah, I mean now uh, I'm going to take the template that I, uh, that I made uh, and I can... I've already done the the buttonholes, so I'm just gonna do the joystick hole here and the actual um, the trackball hole. So uh, that'll be the next thing. So I'll set that up. Hey, so I set it up a little bit here. So let me see. So the first thing I want to do is make sure this is all nice and tight. Templates on. Flip this up and turn it around like that. Put it down. And now I can actually use this sheet, the other piece. Alright. So these guys right here, these two holes are next to. So My router, make sure it fits, and then turn it on. Use my 
fresh. doesn't go by fast <laughs> um, so let me pause this and let's see uh, what it looks like from the other side and there it is so yeah the hand the hole came out perfectly where it should uh, you can see pink around the edges of all these holes so they are exactly where they should be so they're gonna match up when I put the real uh, vinyl on here the translucent vinyl so um, I'm gonna do the rest of these holes off video I don't think anybody needs to see uh, how I do them they already know but uh, yeah as long as everything is uh, templatized um, you can pretty much use this as many times as you want this template on uh, as many control panels as you want either way um, I will wrap this video up for today and I will continue on uh, another day Thank you.